finished up a three-game series against Jersey Shore, top team in the league. The first period on Friday night, and then what I saw on Saturday looked like good hockey from both sides. A little bit, not so much, not so good on uh, periods two and three on Friday. And I'm not sure I missed Sunday's game. Right. What can you tell us about the weekend series? Well, overall, I thought it was really good hockey. It was fast. Um, I would say Saturday was probably the best game of the three overall uh, for both teams. It was fast. It was up and down. Um, we went down 4-1 on Saturday, came back, made it 4-3. Couldn't uh, capitalize on a 5-on-3 power play. You know, they had an empty netter and you know one turnover. But uh, kind of the same as when we were in Jersey. You know, the games were really tight for a while, and then you know we... Uh, We've got to learn how to close games out. Now their goaltenders seem to be on fire this weekend. Uh, I had a comment from uh, Tiger Howitt on Saturday saying he was shaky, and what I saw, he was. They were on all weekend. Yeah, Tiger's a good goalie. I think um, if you look at Friday's game and Sunday's game, Schlager is uh, he's really good. He's fundamentally sound. He's quick. Um, never gives up on a play. He made a save late Sunday in the game where. We thought the puck was ending, kind of dove backwards and pulled it. Um, you know, they're, they're deep all the way from goalie on out, so they're tough to beat. And they had two Buffalo kids on that team, or Buffalo area kids, and there were some loud fans for them. Yeah. We need to do something to make sure that we drown out the other fans that are here. Well, isn't that your job to uh, rally the troops in the stands? We've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Saturday's game, we like said there was there was it was a good game up and down the ice both time uh, both ways. Well, how do you think you guys reacted after being down by a couple and then coming back to make it so close at the end of the second? Well, I, th I thought we showed a lot of resiliency. Um, you know, and even Sunday we were down big, um, came back, we scored two in the third. Um, so we showed a lot of resiliency, which will go a long way in the playoffs because there's going to be a lot of momentum changes in the playoffs, and uh, you know we need to be ready for that. We need to be able to respond to it. So. You know, I thought we were resilient. We came back. Like I said, we had a chance five on three to tie it up on Saturday night, and uh, we just didn't cash in. A couple of your guys are banged up this weekend from this weekend. How are they all doing? Uh, pretty good. Um, Maranti's eye is swollen shut, so he's in his practice tonight um, from hitting his head into the boards. Um, and uh, Durkee seems to be fine. And uh, other than that, I think we're good. A playoff, well, not quite playoffs yet, but it'll be the team you see in the playoffs, Wilkes-Barre on Friday afternoon and then Saturday morning. Right. Uh, what do you expect on those type of games, and how did you play against them previously in the year? Um, first of all, though, they'll be fast games. I think top to bottom, I think Wilkes-Barre is probably the most talented team overall from a skill set standpoint. They're fast. Um, you know, I think that. Um, you know, if we're tenacious in the offensive zone, we can score some goals on them. Um, but it's going to be tough. And, you know, it's playoffs. Everybody's going to be uh, ready to rock and roll, and everybody will be in playoff mode this weekend. So They had a big game yesterday. They won 13-2 to yeah. over Syracuse, and they had three players have hat tricks. Yeah. They were on fire yesterday. Yeah, uh, you know what? I think Syracuse is a better team than that. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you're not in the playoffs at the end of the season, you know, who knows if some of their guys mailed it in. You know, um, only Beavis can answer that question. But they're a better team than that. Just could have been one of those days. Who knows? In an EMP interview with Scott Leffler, you said that you're going to treat this upcoming series as a playoff series, yeah. so you can go in on a hot streak. Yeah. Good luck with that. I really hope that we see a couple wins coming out of it. Yeah. What do you think that you're going to have to do to overcome? Like you said, they're probably one of the most talented teams. Well, I think we need to be tight on our back checks, uh, allow our D to pick tight gaps. Uh, if you let them come up the speed with ice or up the ice with a lot of speed, uh, they're dangerous. So we need to be uh, really focused on our back check uh, into the defensive zone. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you.
You could have shaved. <laughs> Playoff beard. Oh, yeah, that's right. Not until after the World Series Series. What, shave? No, no, they play up beard. I do play up beard after the regular season. I have to get a head start on it because it takes a while. <laughs> I mean, a couple days. <laughs> So the playoffs are coming up. Let's talk about a couple things before the playoffs come up. You guys have seen pretty much every team in the league several times, and you see it from a different perspective than the guys do on the ice. As far as team speed goes, which team would you say has the fastest team speed combined on the ice when you guys are watching what's going on? Um, I, I think one of the faster teams we played was uh, Maine. Or not Maine. Um, uh, New Hampshire. Yeah, New Hampshire. They had a pretty fast team. They're all pretty big too, so it's tough to play against. And obviously, Jersey has great team speed as well. Um, they're probably more of a size team, um, but they do have a couple lines that can move pretty fast. Okay. Now, in a game like the Jersey Friday, second and third period, things got a little chippy. So now you were in the game, yeah, Tyler. So, and when that happens, do you guys have to kind of put your head on a swivel and? watch your crease or do you change your game at all or do you just kind of count the guys in front of you to keep all the traffic out of your net or what? Um, try to stay focused on you know the game, don't let that stuff get you off. Um, you know they have a couple guys that like to get in close to your crease and you know tap at you and get you going but you just gotta stay focused on the game. I mean every now and then I, if a guy skates a little bit too close I like to give them a little Yeah, yeah I don't know why I give them a little jab. But... Just to make sure that they know that they can't skate yeah. too close to your crease but um yeah, for the most part, you just try to stay focused and let your guys take care of the guys in front. Now, as a goalie, I don't know, I felt about it, but Craig asked me a question during one of the games. When stuff breaks out of the other end of the ice, and you see the other goalie getting a little <laughs> rambunctious, yeah. what runs through your head? What do you guys start thinking? Um, I don't know. Like, like it did happen in uh, Friday's game. Uh, I forgot what happened. I think Golba came in and tapped the guy. And he kind of came out, so I kind of skated out thinking if he does something, I'm going to go down there too. But, because uh, you know, a goalie fight, that's just something every goalie wants to get in at some point. So, I don't know. But, uh, you know, as long as nothing goes, you don't want to take your stuff out of the game. You know, just go down there and charge him for nothing. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much the same way. Uh, just, I mean, yeah, it would be fun to get in a goalie fight, but at the same time, you don't want to, like, well, one for one thing, get hurt or have something happen, mm -hmm. um, and like or th get thrown out. So mm -hmm. I would still like to fight Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are brutal on Tiger. Tiger, Tiger right yeah. Um, okay, so you're on the ice. You you got your head in the game, and like this weekend, we had a couple five on threes. Now I don't think that you guys faced any five on threes, but I think that I don't remember actually. I know there was a couple of. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing the game, you've got your head in the game, you're playing in a certain mode, and all of a sudden a, a power play comes up for the other team and you, you got yourself in a certain way. But then it's five on three. So what changes for you guys when you are two men down and you're pretty much the main penalty killer at that point? So what goes through your head? What do you, how do you react to that? Um, I don't know. They're tough because, you know, you got to keep your head in a swivel. You're always looking for that one guy dropping down that you can't see that back door. So... I don't know. I think you you know uh, you get a little more into the game on those, especially because I know they had a couple power plays that are down our zone for you know a while. So you, know, you really got to stay focused and keep your head on the swivel looking for that guy. Um, for me, it's all about puck control. Um, on plays like that, I mean, usually they're going to be taking more shots from the point. So you want to try and limit the big rebounds and try to just smother as much as you can, just to control the puck and uh, control the play and make sure that they don't get too quick around the rest of your team. I noticed with the team speeds that we have in this league, you guys don't handle the puck very much with your sticks. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you like to do if you give them the chance, or just something you kind of try and stay away from? Or um, I like to play the puck when I can. Uh, I actually got yelled at when we went to New Hampshire though, the one time. I tried to do it on a power play, but uh, like I know in the game Friday I had a pass up to Cuse. 
for a quick breakout. So, I mean, when, I, when the opportunity comes, but you don't want to take yourself out of the play, you know, go too far, try to handle the puck, and end up losing it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I've had that happen in the past, and guys put it in. So, you know, it just feels terrible to have that happen. So, you, you got to make the smart play. Yeah. Uh, I've never been that big on playing the puck. Um, I mean, obviously, going behind the net and stopping and that kind of stuff. But, I, like, passing it out and making breakout passes has never really been my forte. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, when when the, you have the opportunity, you have to take it. Um, but you can't hesitate if there's another guy from the other team coming down. It's either you have to do it or you, you, or you don't. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I mean, you just have to be careful with that because you don't want to, as Mike Shotty said, I've had the same thing happen before where you make a bad pass and... No worse feeling than that. Yeah. So you guys got your pregame stuff. Coach comes to you and says, you're starting this game. And you, you play. What's the difference between Coach saying that in the regular season and Coach saying that in the playoffs as far as preparing for a game? Um, for playoffs, I think you have a little more mental preparation. You know, it's do or die. So, I mean, for my, like, routine, I like to go out and play soccer, you know, kick the ball around. Then I'll do my stretches, go get dressed, and then I like to just sit by myself for, you know, at least 10, 15 minutes, you know, put my head inside my uh, jersey, you know, just kind of get away from everybody. But uh, I think with playoffs, the mental preparation just, it's got to be there, you know. You got to really be focused because, you know, it's just the biggest game, so I think I stay focused. Uh, I mean, I pretty much have the same routine. Um, I've always been kind of... Well, I've always been very religious, and before every game, and especially in playoffs, I try and pray a little bit. And usually, playoff games, I say at least one decade of the rosary, and it just helps me, I guess, feel focused and get zeroed in on the play and everything. So, um. I have one question for you before we close this out. You're the last regular season interviews that we've we've we're going to be doing. Did you think when you came to play on a junior team in Lockport that you'd be doing interviews every week? No, I, I didn't think that. I, I didn't really know. It's something new. I don't, I don't know a lot of teams that do it, you know, but uh, I think it's pretty cool that we do it. All right, guys, before you go, your goalie, everybody, I had them, everybody's got them, your goalie superstitions. Oh, yeah. For me, for me, yeah. I never in the locker room let my, for some reason, my teammates would put my mask on top of my stick. It drove me crazy, yeah. and I hated that. So what do you guys have that's your goalie superstition? Mine is my socks. I gotta wear the same socks. If I don't, if I don't have one, I, I just don't feel the same. I don't know, I don't, I don't, I'm very superstitious. I have like a bunch of them, but I think that's one of my main things, like what I'm wearing. That's nasty shit. Yeah, it's pretty weird. <laughs> Cleveland, what do you think? I've actually never really had anything like that. Yeah. Um, I just kind of go with the flow. Um, I mean, obviously, other than the normal goalie thing, like never having your players say shoot or uh, yeah, the shut word. out. Yeah. Can't say the S word, too. That's the worst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, yeah, I just kind of do whatever. So. All right, guys. Good luck in the playoffs, and thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, you're in the position that you play. I'm just here so I don't get fined.